Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and I know it sounds almost too good to be true, but yes, you can make money from investing in wine, but it's obviously not as easy as it sounds. So today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about wine investment. So let's go. <music> Full disclosure, I'm not a certified wine investment expert and I don't think there is such a thing, but I know the market pretty well as I've worked for one of the leading wine investment institutions for years. The term wine investment describes the acquisition of wine for financial gain. You don't buy the wine to drink and enjoy it, you buy it in order to sell it at a profit. It has been common practice among wine collectors to buy two cases of a wine they liked and then sell one at a later stage in order to finance their next purchase. Over the last decades, wine investment has become a bigger and bigger thing, but it also has a long history. The region most associated with wine investment is probably Bordeaux, where wine was sold for centuries en primeur, months or even years before it's been bottled, in the hope that the wine will appreciate in value. Wine investments by collectors became more and more popular in the 1960s and 1970s, and the auction houses Christie's and Sotheby's established their wine departments in 1966 and 1970. Auctions are to this day still very popular and really useful for determining where the market is going. I was at the Ospice de Bonne auction a few months ago and all of the burgundies on sale were 50% up on the previous year and the most expensive barrel sold for 800,000 euros. <laughs> Eight hundred thousand euros for three hundred bottles of wine. Needless to say, it wasn't me who purchased that barrel. The ascent of Robert Parker in his 100-point rating system encouraged wine investment in the 1980s as he provided an independent and easy-to-understand way of assessing quality. In the early 2000s, wine investment really boomed, especially driven by the Chinese market that was growing rapidly and the establishment of Hong Kong as a tax-free trading hub for fine wine. Livex, the company I was working for, was established during that period as the first online fine wine exchange, similar to the stock exchange, other companies like Far Vintners and the Uno Group really focused on the fine wine investment sector, while established wine merchants like Barry Brothers and Rudd, for example, created their own fine wine departments. Today, the estimated value of the fine wine market is above 4 billion US dollars, which is actually tiny if you compare it to the 94 trillion US dollar stock market. But anyways, let's talk about the factors that actually influence the price of a wine. So first of all, the global economic conditions do have an impact on the fine wine market as well, but maybe less so than in other investment markets and that is mainly because the market is really driven by the rich and as we all know the rich just keep getting richer. Second, vintage quality does have an impact on the quality of the wine and therefore wines from a great vintage trade at a premium. Third critical opinion, Robert Parker was by far the most important wine critic and his influence was significant. You can see here what happened to the price of the 2008 Lafitte on Livex when Robert Parker released his 98 to 100 potential perfect score. The prices jumped like crazy. Parker has retired and sold his publication and there are many more critics today than there were in the past. I would however argue that no one has the influence on the market that Robert Parker had. The most important factor however is the brand. The ability of the winery to produce high quality wines on a consistent basis is key for it to become an investment grade wine producer. This even means that wines from famous chateaus that come from poor vintages and were rated poorly can trade much higher than wines that are not so famous. The 2007 Le Petit Mouton, the second wine of Mouton Rothschild, currently retails for $329 per bottle, excluding taxes, even though it only got 88 points from Robert Parker, while this nice but completely unknown Ayanico got 89 Parker points and sells for 12 euros. You really have to focus on the creme de la creme in order to make a profit. The best wines from Bordeaux, Burgundy, Champagne, the Rhone, Piedmont, Tuscany, Napa and some other wines. Oftentimes people make the point that investment grade wines are rare, but this is not always the case. Usually their production is limited, but Chateau Margaux, for example, produces 160,000 bottles, Chateau Latour 200,000 bottles and Mouton 300,000 bottles of their first wine. This is a lot of wine. Production volumes are not that important when it comes to investment grade wines. It is important, however, that no matter how big the supply of a wine is, it needs to be outstripped by the demand. 
The principles of wine investment are simple. Some wines have a very high demand, but a naturally restricted supply. As these wines age, they get better and better. So the demand for a 1982 Bordeaux is higher than for the same wine from the 2020 vintage. At the same time, the supply decreases as more and more of the wine is being consumed and the market regulates this decrease in supply and the increase in demand by increasing the price and boom. A 12 pack of Lafitte 1982 was first released to the market for 450 pounds and last traded for 46 thousand pounds an increase of 100 times this is like having purchased amazon shares in the early 2000s there is an index that shows the performance of fine wine the livex 100 and if you compare it to other major indices like the dow jones and the FTSE 100 fine wine comes out on top at least if you look at the last year but it was outperformed by the s p 500 so should we all start buying fine wine for investment purposes not really. Wine investment also comes with quite a few risks. The first big problem is provenance. In order to make sure that you're able to sell your fine wine at a premium, you need to make sure that your DRC is not a CRD. And there were quite a few counterfeit scandals in the recent past. The biggest and most well-known one involved a fellow named Rudy Koniawa. Rudy was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison for fraud as he manufactured counterfeit wines. He refilled empty expensive bottles of wines or relabeled old cheap bottles of wines and then sold them at a very high price. He got away with this for a long time as it's quite difficult to tell a counterfeit bottle of wine from a real one. It is therefore crucial that you work with reputable merchants and keep the receipts in order to be able to track the wines back to the source. Another important factor is storage. While you rarely take receipt of a printed out share of a company, fine wine exists and needs to be stored properly. If you don't have a great seller, you need to pay for storage at a professional facility and this will add up over the years. A poorly stored bottle of wine with stained labels and low levels will not produce the same returns as a bottle in perfect condition. You should also keep the original wooden case as wines trade at a premium if they are in their original packaging. The cost of buying and selling fine wine is much higher if you compare it to other assets. If you want to sell your Tesla shares, you just go on your online trading platform and after a few clicks, the trade has gone through. If you want to sell your wine collection, it gets really complicated and it usually costs you much more money than if you would sell a few shares. However, if you make the right calls and invest in the right wines, you can make a lot of money. I have to say that investing in wine is much more fun to me than investing in stocks, but I have invested more money into stocks than into wine. The good thing about wine investment, as they always say, is that you can at least drink it. But you cannot survive on wine alone. Believe me, I have tried. So you should make sure that wine only represents a share of your portfolio. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what do you think about wine investment? Are you doing it? Are you not doing it? Comment down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.